Jean-Pascal Tricoir, Chairman of French Industrial Group Schneider Electric. Thank you for joining us on France 24. Well, thank you for having me. The International Energy Agency just uh, released a new report. It says that the world has become a lot more energy efficient uh, in the wake of the energy crisis triggered by the war in Ukraine. Um, are we really seeing a global shift in, um, in energy transition? Look, it has not said the world has become incredibly more efficient. It said the world has become a bit more efficient. And uh, the reason why uh, IEA is uh, the agency is giving the priority to energy efficiency is that in every scenario of energy transition, energy efficiency comes at the top priority because it's the cheapest, the fastest, and the greenest source of energy, number one. Number two, technologies do exist. Many solutions need long-term innovation. Nobody's sure if they will happen at the right cost on the right scale, but today in energy efficiency, we've got all the technologies. On third point, mm -hmm. we are coming at a point where those technologies re, uh, bring real breakthrough in results in terms of cost or in terms of scale of deployment. What this report says is that the real challenge or the real opportunity is the scale and the speed of deployment. So we need today to do twice more energy efficiency than what we do today. And when you look at developed geographies, we need to increase by 10x the speed of deployment of technologies, which are not the technologies we are using in the past. Those technologies will be digital and electrical, clean electricity. And they can be deployed in one-tenth or one-fifth of the time on the cost of what we used to do in the, in the past. So what you're saying is that we need to push harder and go faster? Yeah, and, and realize that it's not about dreaming about new things coming up. Those things do exist. Take an example, buildings in Europe, they are responsible for 40% of carbon emissions. Only 10% are equipped with digital technology. Only 10% are smart buildings. If we deploy very, very fast digital technology and 90% remaining, then we can gain probably 30% of energy. And in this case, the pressure on our energy systems, energy import is becoming much less. Less than 2% of European homes have electronic and connected systems. So the 98 remaining person can be equipped tomorrow. Industry has done much more uh, because in the past five years, they've committed to carbon reduction emissions in thousands and they've committed also to energy cost reduction because mm. due to the price of energy, it's a must, they must do it. So has that recent energy crisis triggered more investment into cleaner and renewable energy? I think it has, it has accelerated, but it's not the fundamental thing because the price of energy, if you look at the past 10 years, has been quite high all the time. It was a little bit lower uh, five years ago, but if you go back 10 years ago, it was already pretty. I remember that report of Goldman Sachs predicting an oil barrel at $200. Mm -hmm. That's not 200 years ago, that was 10 years ago. So that pressure on energy price will remain. But anyway, the bigger question is climate change. And all of us has to be much better in terms of energy consumption so that we can reduce our carbon emissions. And it's really possible keeping the same level of comfort. And the payback is really quick. The payback on energy efficiency investment is probably three years and sometimes less than one year. So the question is to move faster. And for that, what do we need? We need to measure what we do because most of the people don't know what they do in energy. We need to understand how we can do it. So we need to share the knowledge. We need to be aware of what's existing on the existing technologies that can be deployed. And we need to create a lot of jobs because when you speak about energy efficiency, you are not speaking about new construction. You are speaking going to your apartment, my apartment, and putting the technology so that you're going to save 30% on your energy. That means you work on all the buildings. So the scale is very, very, very different. Mm. Our challenge is to go 10 times faster in deploying energy efficiency technologies. You recently stepped down as CEO of Schneider Electric after 20 years at the helm. Your company, uh, you turned, sorry, the group into one of the most sustainable uh, companies in the world. How can more companies follow your lead? I think we are one of the proven live examples that aligning strategy, technology, and sustainability makes both strategic and environmental sense 
and it makes a huge economic sense. We multiplied the size of Schneider by four. We became the leading company in our sector. We multiply our valuation by close to eight uh, in the same thing. So I don't see personally a trade-off between sustainability and economics. They go together. By definition, as a CEO, my job has been to put Schneider in favorable winds, in great tailwinds, mm. and reduce the risk of the company. And this is exactly what you do when you, you, you bring your company in the territory of sustainability. On, on doing that, it has forced us to innovate. I mean, taking big, airy challenges. Uh, we've, we are doing nothing in digital today. 50% of what we do is digital. We've become one of the top industrial software company in the world. We've become the largest company in the field of electrical on the capacity to connect everything from the power plant to the plug. Uh, so it's been a massive, and we've become a major partner of the Fortune 500 companies in measuring their, their carbon footprint and reducing their carbon footprint. So sustainable and profitable. Sustainable, well, yeah, uh, I would say uh, sustainable profit, yeah. Um, there's been some major climate investment policy, the US Inflation Reduction Act in particular. Um, it could prompt companies to reorient spending um, towards the US instead of Europe. Do you think the EU can keep up with US on green subsidies? I don't see the RIA like this. Uh, the RIA is a massive investment in green capex to get out of brown, brown opex. Right? It's kind of catching up on an infrastructure which was built in older times on bringing it to the 21st century, making it efficient and sustainable. So I think it's a good thing, and you've seen Europe uh, doing the same thing. And I, I believe that developed countries must do that. Uh, the sooner you turn your existing infrastructure from brown to green, the faster you benefit from savings the faster you don't have to buy a lot of energy that's good for your wallet on the top of your, your environment, and for new economies, where there's, be, there's going to be a huge development in the next coming years, it's something to learn that it's good to build right from scratch, right? To build net zero from scratch, to be net zero compliant, or as close as possible to net zero from the new building. I mean, Africa, India, Southeast Asia, Latin America will build tons of new buildings, tons of new plants and cities in the next coming years, they shouldn't do what we've been doing because then they would have to reinvest an IRA in 20 years. They have to build right from the beginning. That will make them much more competitive. And what about China and its dominance on clean tech? Do you think um, this could pose a problem just as over-reliance on uh, Russian energy did? Look, I, I, I think climate change is not country by country. Climate change is a collective challenge. And if you look at the real challenges of humanity, they are all global. They can be called a pandemic, they can be called climate change. There is no, not such things as we need it alone, right? We, we need together. So from that point of view, the innovation which is happening in China is good news for the world. It's good news. But isn't it the same as what we've seen with Russian uh, oil and gas? Somebody has to lead the way on the other geographies get inspired on what you've seen is Chinese manufacturers setting up uh, antennas, co collaborations around the world, around those clean techs. And clean techs are not everything, right? You still need many other things to put the system together. Uh, we do a lot in the field of microgrids, for instance, clean energy or energy efficiency with technology which is coming from other places and that combines together with what the other ones are bringing to make the environment net zero. Big problems will not be resolved region by region. Big problems have to be resolved together. Jean-Pascal Tricouard, Chairman of Schneider Electric, thank you for joining us on France 24. Thank you.